Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, sorry I haven't been uploading lately, I've been quite busy with other projects, but um, hopefully we're back on track now and we can go back to upload more frequently. Um, so today I've decided we are going to make another C sharp control. Um, this control will be coded in .NET. Uh, seeing as last one was really popular, I thought I'd give it another shot and um, expand some of my knowledge. Okay, so basically we are going to be coding the top graph. This is going to be programmatically drawn. Um, the bottom graph is what we aim to achieve. Uh, I built this for Xander UI, which is um, a new version coming out very, very soon. Um, it's got interactive points. We probably won't get to the interactive points, but we'll definitely be able to draw a graph similar to this. So let's get started. First of all, we want to create a new project. Windows Forms app. Okay, we want a .NET Framework application. Um, you can code this in a class library. However, you're working pretty much blindly unless you add it to another form and test it on another form. So for this purpose, we'll be creating a Windows Forms app. So we will call it um, my test graph. Okay. As you can see, we start off with a blank screen. There's nothing there, and we're not planning on adding anything there besides our control once we build it. So we've got our Solution Explorer, and we will add a new item, and we want to add a class. We'll call this class the Graph Class. Okay. So first of all, we want to import a few libraries. Uh, the, we're going to be inheriting the properties of a control so the first thing we want to do is import the Windows Forms library. Um, second of all, we'll be drawing programmatically. So we want to add using system dot drawing. That should be enough. Okay. Um, so we want to uh, make a public class public partial class, sorry, because we're going to be importing from the control. Okay, so we're importing from control. And now I want to add an, uh, an initializer, so public graph. Okay, um, here we'll define the size, so we'll go, the width of this will be, I don't know, let's go 900. And the height will be, we'll go 300. 300 is a good number. It's a line graph. Okay. Um, let's add a, let's add a few, uh, a, a few, a few properties that we can change and mess around with. First of all, we'll go public int array. Yeah, we'll go in int array. And we'll call it data will be equal to a new integer array and we will add some values uh, I've got some values written down to demonstrate it very nicely um, so it's 1, 9, 5, 7, 4, 10, 7, 2, 9 So we've got our integer array set up and ready to go. Actually, let's send it on five. We had another one. Nothing to kill. Okay. That will be our our data that we feed into it. Um, we'll add a color for the background and a color for the line. So public color uh, background color equal to color dot from RGB. Um, I like dark colors, so I like I really like this color. It's like a dark gray, sort of like the like the Visual Studio background. Um, we'll add another color, and we'll call it the line color. Um, for line color, I really like the material look. Um, so 
I do have a nice color in mine. It's called Dodger Blue. It's inbuilt. Okay. Okay, so now we've got our um, properties that we can set and mess around with if we want to change them. Um, so let's move on and let's start painting this. So we want to override the paint method. So protected, override, on paint. <coughs> okay, so the base on paint we never ever want to touch. Um, don't touch this unless you know what you're doing with it. Otherwise it can cause a whole lot of issues. Um, the paint event argument is passed on to the on paint method which means it pretty much performs the base on paint method first. So I want it to paint the control first and then we'll paint over what's already painted. Okay, um, so first of all, we'll change the smoothing mode. So the e.graphics smoothing mode, we will change it to uh, high quality. We've got high quality, why not? Um, second of all, what we do. Okay, so first we'll, we'll discuss the algorithm that we'll be using to draw the graph. So I'll display it on screen while I'm explaining. But basically, we want the graph width divided by the length of our data array minus one. So in this case, it'll be the width, which is 900, divided by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it'll be, uh, it'll be uh, 900 divided by 10. That'll be, the, that'll be how much we need to increment to make the graph evenly distribute the line. Uh, second of all, uh, to, to point the height of the line and where it should, it should end, we will use the graph height divided by the max number in our array which happens to be 10 and we need to time that by the actual value itself. So our Y step will be 30 times one, 30 times nine, 30 times five, and that's where each point will end up. So we will now move on and we will start building the X and Y steps. So the first X step will be defined uh, as an integer and we'll go in x step court and we'll put that equal to the width the width divided by oh we need to put that in brackets because we need to perform, perform an operation in there so the data array dot count minus one That'll be the X step and the Y step. Will be equal to the height divided by the max value in data. Okay. Okay. Um, what else do we need to define? Oh, we need to define the two values prior to the current point we're drawing. So when we draw a point, we want to memorize the last two x and y points of the um of where it was drawn. So we start from there. So we'll go integer previous x is equal to zero, and integer previous y is equal to zero. Actually, we will not make that equal to zero. We will, we want to start the graph from number one, like the, the value, the point where one should be rather than zero. Otherwise we'll start obviously right at the bottom. So we will go the height divided by Oh, actually not divided by, sorry, minus uh, data first value, which is the number one, it'll grab that number, and times the y step. Okay. Okay. 
Um, so now that we've done that, we want to make a boolean. Um, we'll just call it first value. So we want we don't want it to draw a line when defining the first um, the first value. Now we can we can move into the um, the tricky stuff, which is a for loop to draw the lines. So we'll put a for loop, which is for each integer value within our array, which is called data. We'll perform a loop. <coughs> um, so if we're not drawing the first value, what we need to do is add an if statement. So if it's a if it's the first value. First value, do nothing. Actually, no, we can simplify this. If it's not the first value, perform the operation. Otherwise, change the first value and set it to false. Okay. Now to draw the line. Actually, before we get to drawing the line, um, we're going to be we're going to be drawing quite a bit actually, so maybe we should just create a solid brush. We'll create a solid brush and a pen. Okay, so a solid brush is used to fill in uh, fill in rectangles and ellipse, whereas a pen is used to draw the shape of an ellipse. Okay, so. Solid brush, uh, we'll call it background brush. Equal to a new solid brush. And we will choose the color, which is our background color. Okay. Um, now we'll create a new pen, which is going to be used to draw a line. So line pen. And that'll be equal to a new pen. And we want to choose our line color. Um, we should also add the thickness of the line, which is two. We'll just go two pixels. You can change the sorry for. Um, sorry gets quite weird. Any odd number gets actually really weird when drawing um, a line, certain thickness, unless you're just drawing one line. If you're drawing multiple, it sort of doesn't match up, and you see like little um, like line endings and stuff. It's it's, it's quite odd. Okay. Actually, with that being said, we should actually fill fill in the background a bit here. So let's just fill in the background. So we've got e.graphics.fill rectangle. Want to fill it with the color of our background brush. And when to start at zero for X and Y. And we want to fill it all the way to the end, which is our width, and all the way to the, to the top, which is our height. Yeah, that should be it. Okay. So, <clears throat> now let's move on to the more complex part, which is drawing the line. Um, okay, we've already defined the previous X and Y. Okay, let's just go to drawing line. So, e.graphics.drawline. Okay, and we want to use the line pen, which is our pen we defined earlier. Um, for our first point, we want it to start at the previous X and the previous Y. Now we need to create new, another new point to end the line, which is going to be that will be the previous X plus our X step value. And for the height, we want to go our height. So basically, if we started at zero, we would end up drawing the graph upside down. So we want to sort of work backwards, so we draw from the bottom upwards. So our height minus, oh, I'll have to put this in brackets, our value, our data value, of course, times our y step. And that. Oh, my bad. There you go. Okay. Um, now 
want to memorize the points that we are ending at. So this is pretty simple. We just set our previous x equal to our x point that we end at. And our previous y to our y point that we end at. Which is this. Now, that should actually work perfectly fine if my calculations are correct and we code it correctly. We can build the project, go back to our form design, make it a bit bigger because 900 pixels is quite large. Go to our toolbox and look at our components. Drag and drop. Hey, there we go. So as you can see, it's drawn this perfectly. Um, let's just change the line thickness to just change it to seven so I can show you guys exactly what it looks like at seven control shift build we need to remove the control and we need to add it back there yeah see as you can see with um with odd numbers that doesn't turn out very good we'll just change it back to two because I like thin lines I don't really like the thick ones good so we've got our graph ready um, this is the basics um, what we'll do next time is we'll add a section along uh, this is a button so we'll add like a section along here with like a count we will like we'll, we'll add an increment counter um, and we'll add a we'll add another one down the bottom uh, let's just say a timeline. We'll just we might extend the graph, make it a we'll make it have um make it have twelve uh, values, and we'll just we'll just make a month or something, and we'll add a whole bunch of profits and losses and stuff in here, so we can really see the graph and how it works. Uh, but yeah, that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching the video. Um, if you enjoyed, like and subscribe. I'll be posting a lot more videos. Uh, cheers for coming by.